A Boeing 767 is completely destroyed. People were on the ground, too weak to move. 129 people are dead. I was surprised that anybody survived. It's the worst air disaster in South Korean history. What are they doing here? They should be all the way down there. Investigators face puzzling evidence. Help me find the runway. And why he didn't say, let's get out of here, let's miss the approach. We don't understand that. Start from the timing again. Timing. Could a few critical seconds aboard Air China Flight 129 have made the difference between life and death? It's crazy. Air China Flight 129 has been in the air for a little less than two hours. Among the 155 passengers is a group of Korean tourists flying home from vacation. Their tour guide is 28-year-old Seoul Iksu. I had just started a new job, and my wife was four months pregnant. There were about 20 people traveling with our agency. I had many things to take care of. Captain Wu Jinlu heads the Chinese flight crew. He has more than 6,000 hours in the cockpit. 18 degrees, dew point 16. First Officer Gao Li Ji has over 1,200 hours in the 767. Expect radar vectors to left downwind. The most junior member of the team is Second Officer Hu Jingying. There was a third pilot in the cockpit, a second officer, who was doing the radio calls, and that was because of his proficiency in English. They're piloting a Boeing 767-200. Built in 1985, it's 17 years old. Air China is the flagship carrier of the People's Republic. Its fleet of 68 planes flies routes across all of Asia and beyond. The airline has a stellar safety record, with no serious accidents. Flight 129 is flying southeast, from Beijing to Kim Hae International Airport in Pusan, South Korea. It should be on the ground in less than 30 minutes. Approach checklist. Cabin pressure set. Okay. Targeting speed. 127. Altimeter setting. Set to 3000. The crew is ready to descend. They run through their approach checklist. Recall. Check complete. Approach checklist completed. I just can't believe that happened. I was working very hard because I had ambitions to be promoted. I didn't take breaks and work late. I was trying my best. But for Seoul Iksu, who's trying to make a good impression in his new job, Today is feeling like a disaster. I mean, what kind of person does that? It all started to go wrong this morning when he made a mistake that he worries could get him fired. I had arranged for the group to sit in first class. But right before we got to the airport, I realized that I'd left my passport and bag in the hotel lobby. The bus driver had to turn around and go back to the hotel. Uh, the good seats were first come, first served. Because we had to return to the hotel, my group was pushed to seats at the very back of the plane. Some of the travelers were very angry. Don't touch my purse. I even told the group that I would return my tips. 
저희 손님들은 다 뒤로 밀렸어요. Seoul Iksu has no way of knowing the far more important impact of this minor mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin our approach to Kimei Airport. Local weather is foggy with some rain. We'll be landing in approximately 20 minutes. Kimei Tower, Air China 129. Good morning. With you now. 15 minutes before landing, the crew contacts the airport approach controller. Air China 129, Kim Hei approach. Fly heading 190, descend to 6,000. Roger. Turn heading 190, descend to 6,000. In this case, the co-pilot started the approach. He was actually the pilot flying. The captain was really monitoring his altitude because the captain is the non-flying pilot. Captain Jin Lu has landed at Kim Hei three times before. It should be smooth sailing on approach. Air China 129, turn left, heading 160. Descend to 2,600. Turn left, heading 160, descend to 2,600. Visibility is not very good. Kim Hei Airport is near Korea's southern coast, an area known for unpredictable weather. Uh, regarding the weather at the airport, I don't think there was anything unique about this particular day. There were clouds, there was rain. Gear down. Gear down. Last one. Runway in sight. Runway in sight. There, China 129, contact tower 118.1, circle west. Circling approach is a visual approach. The pilot has to maintain sight of the runway the entire time. If the weather is accurate, he should be able to conduct this approach and still keep his eye on the runway. The controller didn't get a response to his last radio call. The wind is too strong. It's very hard to fly. Changing weather conditions are posing a challenge for the crew. There's land runway 18. Reduce speed. Okay. Seoul Iksu worries that the bad weather will delay their arrival in Busan. I thought the plane was circling because of foggy weather. The tower controller struggles to track the incoming 767 through thick clouds. Air China 129, are you able to land? Let's go around! Pull up, pull up! I heard people screaming. I was sliding. I couldn't keep my body straight because the speed was too fast. Then, bang! All of a sudden, the plane stopped. I thought I was dead. I wasn't able to think about anything, not even my family. Light was coming through a gap. 
I realized it was coming from outside. Flight 129 crash survivor, Sol Iksu, inches his way through a tangle of wires, crushed cabin debris, and razor-sharp aluminium fragments. Finally, he emerges into daylight, alive, but still not sure if he's out of danger. After the crash, I smelled fuel. I was certain it was airplane fuel. Air China Flight 129 has crashed into the side of Mount Dotte, miles from the intended runway. More than 3,000 emergency responders swarm the site. The crash site was horrible. It was truly a miracle that they were able to find a number of survivors from such a massive crash. Of the 166 people on board, 37 survive. Almost all those who made it out alive were seated near tour guide Sol Iksu. 90% of the tour group I was traveling with survived. The fact that the young tour guide forgot his passport, something he thought was a shameful mistake, will be remembered forever as a life-saving stroke of luck. Korean air accident investigators arrive on the scene, along with American investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board. You could tell the whole area had been cleared out by the impact of the whole aircraft, and pieces were spread all over the place. I was surprised that anybody survived. Let me borrow those. From the crash site, investigators can see the airport nearly three miles away. There is no simple explanation for why Flight 129 hit terrain so far from the runway. What are they doing here when they should be all the way down there? It was obviously in a landing mode. What would cause him to get this low, this far out? He should have been well above this terrain. You wondered, why did this guy hit a hill? Keep me posted. The captain survived. Let's hope he can tell us something useful. Investigators learned that the only surviving member of the flight crew is Captain Wu Jin Lu. It was surprising that the captain survived the uh, crash because the impact forces are usually worse in the front of the airplane. If he does survive and he's truthful, it can help an investigation a lot because then you find out what really is going on. With the captain on his way to hospital, investigators focus on what the crash site can tell them about the accident. Debris is scattered for hundreds of yards down the hillside. It was over a large area. I was surprised it was so big. Uh, Normally, when an incident occurs, the wreckage and debris tend to stay within the area of their initial impact point. The widely scattered wreckage begins to paint a picture. Hey, take a look at this. The tail section landed over there. The front of the plane is all the way over there. The back of the plane must have landed first, meaning the pilot was pulling up as the plane hit the ground. Flight 129 did not nosedive into the ground. Instead, the evidence suggests that at the last moment, the crew was trying to avoid hitting the mountain. If that's the case, it would help explain why some people survived. If he hadn't have done that, it may have been worse. But he, the airplane kind of cushioned itself a little bit into the trees, and impact forces were lessened as the airplane 
hit the ground, tore the engines off, and slid through the trees, and so the people survived. But the central question remains unanswered. Why did Flight 129, in the midst of a seemingly routine landing, crash into a mountainside? The answers investigators need may lie with the plane's black boxes. Searchers have pulled the critical devices from the wreckage. But it will take expert lab analysis before anyone knows if the data can be recovered. I'm going to go down to the airport, talk to air traffic control, and see if they've got anything to say. After any plane crash near a runway, some of the first people investigators want to speak to are the air traffic controllers. They were slated to perform a straight-in approach, but there was change to a circling approach. Why the sudden change? The wind changed direction. I changed the, the approach so they can land into the wind. Switching from straight-in to a circling approach is something that happens routinely at airports around the world. Some airports, you have to come one way in because of mountains or whatever, and then once you get to the airport, because of winds, you may circle and land. Flight 129 was originally scheduled to land on runway 36 left, coming in from the south. But after the change, they were headed for runway 18 right, coming in from the north instead. We're closer to sea. The weather is always changing. We do this all the time. Air traffic control gave them clearance for a circling approach, which was appropriate for the weather conditions at the time. Is there anything else you can remember? Communications. Their radio communications were all wrong. How do you mean? Air China 129, contact tower 118.1, circle west. Shortly after he instructs Flight 129 to do a circling approach, the tower controller tells the pilots to switch to a new radio frequency. Air China 129, contact tower 118.1. When the uh, controller told the crew to switch to the tower frequency, they didn't acknowledge Air China 129, please contact 1181. The tower had to remind them, call them a couple times. This is Kim Hei Tower on guard. Air China 129, if you hear me, please contact 118.1. The tower eventually called the cockpit on uh, emergency frequency. All airports use a standard frequency to communicate in emergency situations. If air traffic control even suspects a plane is in distress, they will use this frequency to contact the crew. Kimbe Tower, Air China 129, circular approach, 18 right. Air China 129, check wheels down. Wind 210 at 17 knots. Clear to land runway 18 right. They finally call me back. It seemed like we we're finally back on track. Then less than a minute later, they crash into the mountain. The Air China crew was slow to respond to air traffic control. Investigators need to know what was going on in the cockpit during the unusual delay. If air traffic controllers make a statement and the crew either doesn't answer or misinterprets it, it can cause the accident, basically. Thank you. Oh, just a minute, please. Hello? Thank you. Captain's OK. Let's go see if he's ready to speak. Captain Wu Jinlu is the only member of the cockpit crew from Air China 129 to have survived. He may be the one person alive who knows what led to the fatal crash. It was hard to tell what injuries he had, but he was not in good shape. It wasn't life-threatening, I don't think, but it was not good. It was going to take him a while to recover. When I went to interview Captain Wu, he could not move, but he was clearly conscious to answer all the questions that the, the investigators asked. Was there anything mechanically wrong with the plane? No. 
Everything seemed fine. Then suddenly, the mountain seemed to come out of nowhere. Let's go around, pull up, pull up! It was the typical CFIT controlled flight into terrain accident. That is to say, was aircraft under pilot control is unintentionally flown into the ground and the flight crew members are not aware of the impending disaster until too late. Did you have any difficulty communicating with the tower? No. Everything was normal. Controllers have already told investigators that the radio communication was far from normal. It's a troubling contradiction. Is there anything else you can tell us? Investigators wonder if the last minute change to the approach presented any problems. Air China 129, this time active runway change 18 right. Wind 210 at 17 knot. Expect circling approach. Circle approach runway 18 right. Using runway 18 right. Pilots should be alert for anything, and they should be thinking ahead. They should be thinking, well, I'm going to land on this runway, but what happens if I have to do a circling approach? Did this cause you any difficulties? No. It was fine. This is what we're trained to do. Captain Wu stated that all he could remember was he saw a hill before the crash, and next he found himself bleeding around the accident aircraft. Nothing I heard in the interview in the hospital indicated that there was anything wrong. I mean, aside from, well, what happened. The crash near Busan is the worst air disaster ever on Korean soil. 129 fatalities. As family members mourn the victims, pressure mounts on the investigation. How could a plane coming in for a routine landing suddenly hit a mountain? Lab technicians have managed to recover all the data from the Air China flight data recorder. Things like the plane's speed, altitude, heading, and other critical flight parameters right up to the moment of impact. Investigators are eager to learn more about the circling approach, an approach the captain says posed no difficulties. Around here, they should be circling in for a landing, but they just keep going. Then they crash into the mountain. Why didn't they turn here? They were a lot farther out than they realized. How are they supposed to do this approach? Pass me the training manual. Every airport has detailed procedures on how to approach its runways. Pilots are trained to follow these procedures to the letter. Gears down, flaps 20, turn 45 degrees, parallel to end of runway start timer. Let's get this on the board. The landing procedure for Pusan calls for pilots to use a cockpit chronometer to aid with a circling approach. By timing maneuvers to the second, they should be more precise. But a cockpit timer can't guarantee a safe landing. If you set a timer, it's your procedure to do that, and you don't make sure that that procedure is followed, you're defeating your whole purpose of having the timer in the first place. So gear down here. Then they're supposed to do a 45 degree turn for 20 seconds here. Then they're supposed to make a 45 degree turn for 20 seconds here. You time it out 20 seconds, you turn parallel the runway, and then you make up what's called a base turn, 180 degree turn and land uh, on the runway. Here they should see the end of the runway. 20 seconds later, they should have made their base turn. Despite what the captain has said, it looks like he got off to a bad start on the approach. 
the uh, flight recorder showed that the pilot did not execute his first turn. He's supposed to make a left turn to begin the circling approach, and he's supposed to do that with aggressively. He didn't turn steep enough uh, with a steep enough bank. How fast were they going? They soon learned that bank angles weren't the only problem on the approach to Pusan. 158 knots. That's much too fast. The aircraft was flying about 20 knots faster than it should have. Flying at too high a speed, they covered the downward leg more quickly than expected, which left them less time to prepare for the final turn. It's interesting that such a thing as 20 knots fast can make such a difference, but the truth is it does make a difference. They're doing this all wrong. What were the pilots thinking? It's now clear that the crew of Air China 129 mishandled the early stages of their approach to Pusan. But what's still a mystery is why the experienced pilots failed to correct the problem in time to make a safe landing. In 1992, an Air Inter flight bound for Strasbourg, France met a tragic end similar to Air China 129. Flying in low cloud on final approach, the Airbus A320 plowed into a mountainside 12 miles from the runway. 87 people died. The investigation revealed that the crew was unfamiliar with the plane's sophisticated computer interface. The pilots accidentally selected a dangerously fast descent speed. 3,300 feet per minute. By the time they realized they were in danger, it was too late. Were the Air China pilots unfamiliar with some critical task? Something that might explain why they failed to execute a fairly routine approach. Korean investigators dig into their work histories in search of clues. Certified as a first officer in January 2002, Completed his first flight on the Boeing 767 in February. That's just two months ago. What about the captain? He had close to almost 6,300 hours on the 767. They learned that while the first officer was relatively new to the 767 cockpit, the captain was very familiar with the plane. But then they uncover something remarkable. He's never done a circling approach at Kimi Airport before. Records show that not even in his simulator training had the captain attempted the approach. His training was only done in the simulator, simulating a circling approach at Beijing Airport. Uh, that doesn't get you prepared for an airport like this with the uh, high terrain around it. They had plenty of flight time, but I guess they never encountered this kind of a situation. To me, the fact that the crew had never done a circling approach is not good. Still, pilots have charts in the cockpit that explain landing procedures. Crews land at unfamiliar airports all the time. There must be more to the story. Is the cockpit voice recorder ready yet? So far, Investigators have uncovered evidence of a crew flying too fast on approach and mishandling an initial turn. Now they need to figure out why the rest of the approach went so catastrophically wrong. Everybody ready? Let's start from the very beginning of their approach. They hope the cockpit voice recording will provide some answers. Approach checklist, have a pressure set. Okay. Targeting speed, 127. Everything seems to be in order so far. Let's keep listening. Air China 129, campaign approach. Fly heading 190, descend to 6,000. Roger. Turn heading 190, descend to 6,000. So now they're on approach about nine minutes from scheduled landing. Up to now, they think they're coming in here. But the controller changes it to here. Remember, the 
pilots have never done this before at this airport. Air China 129, this time active runway change 18 right. Wind 210 at 17 knots. Expect circling approach. Circle approach, runway 18 right. We are using runway 18 right. So they immediately acknowledge their circling approach. The flight is now just minutes from disaster. Investigators listen closely for anything that might explain the fatal flight path. Minimum descent altitude is 700 feet. 607, 700 feet. The pilots continue their checklist. Do we exit on this side taxiway? What's it called? Charlie 6. It soon becomes clear they've missed a critical step. After we land, we can leave directly using taxiway Charlie 6. Stop. They're talking about what to do after they land, but they never did a proper briefing for the actual landing. Flight rules require commercial pilots to review every aspect of a landing beforehand. It's called the approach briefing. The approach briefing should have every eventuality that could take place during the approach. Now, switching from a straight in to a circling is unusual, but it should have still been discussed. They didn't fully review their landing procedure, let alone what they had to do to execute our final approach. Someone's supposed to call a checklist and say approach briefing, and then someone's supposed to give approach briefing. When that didn't happen, somebody's supposed to speak up, say, hey, captain or first officer, we didn't do approach briefing. That's crew coordination. The missed briefing helps explain why the crew botched their initial turn. It also points to a level of carelessness in the cockpit. But what the CVR reveals next will leave investigators in total dismay. Okay, let's see what else they say. Runway in sight. Runway in sight. Investigators listen as the Air China crew, now just moments from a fatal impact, continue an approach that they never discussed in advance. Air China 129, contact tower 118.1, circle west. You see the end of the runway? And the runway is to the right. This is Kim Hei Tower on guard, Air China 129. If you hear me, contact 118.1. The crew is overwhelmed by the unfamiliar approach and fails to respond to the controller. Timing. Wait, where's my stopwatch? Investigators know that a circling approach demands precise timing of the turning maneuvers. Okay, start from the timing again. If you hear me, contact 118.1. Here's where they start the timer. Timing. The captain relies on his cockpit chronometer. In exactly 20 seconds, he must begin his final turn. They had to fly the aircraft away from the airport and then a, a turn on to final and then land in the opposite direction. The wind is too strong. It's very hard to fly. I have control. Remarkably, Captain Wu Jinlu responds to his first officer's concern over wind speed by taking over the flying duties. He makes the switch at the worst possible moment. What is happening in that cockpit? One of the critical things in this particular accident was the switching of control during the 20 seconds. In the middle of the 20 second timer, he decides to take control. That's crazy. By suddenly taking control of the plane, the captain increases his workload at a critical moment and diverts his attention from the timer. Not only does he have to fly the airplane, he's got to manage uh, the crew and, and other activities. He's got to monitor the radio calls. It confused the first officer. It made the division of duties uncertain. They didn't know what, what person was supposed to do what. When he takes control, the captain should clearly spell out the division of duties. Most critically, he needs to tell the first officer to keep track of the timer, but that never happens. Once he gets to the end of the timer, he says he's gonna turn, but he doesn't. 
There was a lot of confusion listening to the CVR, a lot of confusion and uh, lack of coordination in the cockpit. Turning right. The U-turn back to the runway should begin at the 22nd mark. But with the captain now flying and the first officer looking for the runway, no one starts the turn. The whole idea of timing uh, on, a mis on a circling approach is to get your certain spacing from the runway. And again, if there's winds, you have to adjust your timing and your, uh, your angles of turns. Turning right. In this case, the breakdown in communications within the cockpit, they did not take account of the timing. And they just kind of maneuvered the airplane uh, where they thought it should go. It was a total breakdown in approach procedures. And as investigators are about to discover, the confusion in the cockpit only gets worse. You have the runway in flight? No, I can't see out. Low cloud is now blocking the pilot's view of the runway. Turn, turn now. A circling approach falls under visual flight rules. If pilots lose sight of the runway at any time, they are trained to immediately abort the landing and go around to try again. Passenger safety should have been the pilot's primary concern, and so maintaining visual contact with the runway the highest priority. I was truly surprised to find out that they proceeded with the landing approach without having the runway in sight. Turn! Turn now! It was getting pretty nasty, and, and, and why he didn't say, let's get out of here, let's miss the approach, uh, that's, we don't, we don't understand that. Flying a 767 into a cloud on a visual circling, which all circling approaches are, is unacceptable. It's not professional. This shouldn't have happened. They've just lost sight of the runway, and they're here, seconds from the mountain. Investigators have discovered that the pilots of Air China Flight 129 continued with their approach to Busan, even though they could no longer see the runway. The captain's supposed to go around when he can't see the airport, and uh, he didn't do that. He continued turning and following instructions, trying to get back to the runway, which is totally wrong. Help me find the runway. They have also now dropped below the minimum safe altitude. But only the first officer seems to have noticed. Pay attention to your altitude. They were supposed to level off at a certain altitude. They went right through it. It's getting hard to fly. Watch your altitude. The captain continues to descend for almost 30 seconds before his first officer finally speaks up. Must go around. Pull up. Pull up. No, no, no. But it's too late. This is a anatomy of a botched approach. You never fly into a cloud on a circling approach. If you do, you should be initiating a go around to get out of that situation. It's pretty basic stuff, it really is. It's something a, a, a Cessna 172 pilot should be able to do, as well as a 767 pilot. The captain is interviewed eight times over the next three months. Investigators never learn why he failed to initiate a missed approach after losing sight of the runway. The most basic of all visual flight rules. Who knows what the captain was thinking of? It's just hard to tell. Human can make mistakes. All of us are human beings. Though investigators can't know for sure, the captain might have been able to react to his mistakes sooner 
if he'd been flying a newer version of the Boeing 767. His 17-year-old plane was not equipped with the latest technology used to warn pilots if they're flying too low. This airplane had in it a ground proximity warning system. Unfortunately, this was an older model, and uh, it did go off. It gave a warning, but it was way too late for the pilot to react. And this accident airplane, Air China, did not have the enhanced GPWS. It was recommended, they just hadn't done it. If it had it been installed, you may have missed the mountain. After the accident, my life changed a lot. Instead of being happy about being alive, I had to live for the people who died in the crash. It has been very difficult. Three years later, on March the 4th, 2005, the Korean Aviation Accident Investigation Board finally publishes its accident report. The causes of this accident are basically human factors. It was poor crew coordination. It was poor communications intra-cockpit and between the tower and the cockpit. It reinforced the need for proper training of flight crews. Key recommendations include providing better training for pilots on circling approaches and a review of in-flight briefing procedures. In the aftermath of the Flight 129 disaster, Air China designates Kim Hae as a special airport. All pilots are now taught how the area's challenging terrain may affect takeoffs, landings, and go-arounds. This should be used as a teaching point for aviators why you give an approach briefing, and a thorough one, not a, just a standard one. And the hard part is, if you're flying day in and day out, to do this again and again and again, but it's necessary, it really is, you, you can see why.